there was an instance where uh, there was a female, a lady, an elderly woman who was uh, still in the pagan beliefs, who was assisted by Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and this is mentioned in the books of Islamic history, known as the books of Sirah, and she was helped by him carrying her belongings uh, for a distance in order to get to her house. And as they were walking together with Muhammad, may peace be upon him, carrying this load, uh, she began to warn him, Oh, my son, you are such a good man. And you know, now there is a man in Mecca here who is swearing our idols and he is uh, saying this and he is trying to split us and divide us and he is causing problems in community and he is such a bad man. He's a magician and he's a poet and he is this and he is that. Do not go near him, do not see him, do not try to talk to him because he is very dangerous, venomous. Those who are interacting with him are falling into his magic. And this was the statement that they were uttering at the time. So later on, uh, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, at that time decided not to respond at all because he was helping the woman and he, she did not realize it is him who she is talking about. So as they got to the house and so on, she asked for an introduction, asked him who he was. And that is when he sees the opportunity to say, oh, my dear mother, do you know that uh, what you have been saying You've been talking about someone all along. And I just want to let you know that I am Muhammad bin Abdullah, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the person whom you are speaking about. The woman was drawn to tears because of this beautiful character, amazing person. And she said, do you know, if this is the case, I bear witness that you are indeed the messenger. And I bear witness that whatever message you have come with, the message of worshipping one God, the God who made you, and that's it. I bear witness it is true. You are the messenger. Look at that. Amazing. The other day I mentioned Umar ibn Khattab anhu. later on he used to laugh. He says, you know, I made an idol of dates. And one day I was hungry, asking the idol, I need food. And the, the food didn't come, so I ate the idol. <laughs> yes. I always say this, there is not just one sheikh on the globe, there are hundreds of thousands. But the problem is if we keep on saying this one's bad, that one's bad, this one's bad, take the goodness and leave whatever you consider an error. Leave it out. Uh, as much as I wouldn't like to address the matter, I have to. Okay, let me explain something. It's not an issue of Wahhabi, non-Wahhabi, what, what people have been here for years on end. It's an issue of intolerance. It's an issue of extremism on all parties. I believe every Ustaz makes mistakes without exception. Take the good from all of them and leave the bad. When someone preaches hatred against another, discount it. And if you have the opportunity, go to them and tell them, please don't talk about other people. I want to ask you a question and I'm going to stand for this. You know who I am, right? I'm a brother of yours in faith. Have you ever heard me talk bad about another person no. mashallah <laughs> mashallah the innocent have borne witness do you agree why i have so much of goodness to share with the world that i don't have time to worry about others come on come on those who talk about others don't have something to present themselves i am busy doing my work so many people send me messages, oh, someone called you a Wahhabi, someone called you a Sufi, someone said you're a Salafi, someone said you're a Deobandi, someone said you're a Baralvi. Some of these names, I don't even know what they mean, to be honest with you. I was waiting for the day they said someone called you a chocolate man, because that's more, that's true, you know. But all these names for me, I say, hey, look, I know what I am. I'm a Muslim and I'm trying to spread a good message amongst all groups. Let me carry on doing my work. The minute I turn to fight them, I become a fighter. I cause a bigger problem 
and now who's going to do this good work? Because my energy, like I said earlier, all the energies are now being utilized, waste of resources, to do something where it's going to be less beneficial, in fact, destructive. So please do yourself a favor. When you hear labeling, you need to be more intelligent than the label. You need to rise above it and tell yourself, whatever good is coming from this person, I will take it. Whatever bad is coming, I will discount it. The reason is, even if you belong to one group, it does not mean the ustazas of your group, everything they say is right. They will also say wrong things. You will have to pick it up. And it doesn't mean that there is a Christian across the road, so they cannot teach you something good. I have had people who taught me mathematics and geography and biology and sociology and English language who were Jews and Christians and Hindus and people who belong to other faiths. I took from them whatever I had to and I left whatever I didn't. You follow what I'm saying? So when you go to the university, you will have a lecturer who might be gay, for example. You know, I'm not talking about this nation in particular, but maybe in Europe, okay? You take from them whatever you feel you need to take from them and leave the rest. I'm there to study petroleum engineering, for example, or whatever else. I took whatever I had to and that's it. And I respect them for having given me what they did. That's humanity. The problem with us is, the problem is all over. We all are guilty of labeling others. This one is this. Let's, let's understand. It's qualities that make us or break us. You have a bad quality. Look, I'm sitting with people. I don't need to know what inclination he is or I am. I know I get along on common factors that are 9,999 compared to the one item that I might, I might find that I'm different with him in. Do you know? So this is why I say, let's not allow our nation to crumble based on this labeling that's going on take the good from everyone and leave that which is not good no matter where it's from may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness we are an ummah we share the shahada that's enough put aside your differences and come together we need the might as an ummah we have the numbers we have everything but the problem is we are disputing and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in another verse in the quran do you know what he says وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The kuffar, they are supporters and protectors of one another. Come what may, they put aside their differences when it comes to sticking up for one another. This is in the Quran. We read the verse tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. This in fact is verse number 73 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal. Do you know what Allah says after he tells us that the kuffar stick up for one another and they protect one another? He says, if you are not going to do the same, then there will be great fitna and facade on earth. That means if you are not going to stick up for one another and protect one another, then there will be chaos and corruption on the whole globe. Hence, we find the chaos and corruption on the globe today. It is a decree of Allah. We are totally disunited. We cannot see face to face yet. We are born through one mother and father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah. May Allah protect us. It is worth crying for my brothers and sisters. We are calling for unity. It is not going to come without tolerating one another. We need to understand not everybody is going to think the same. Not everybody is going to have the same inclinations. But don't we share the shahada? Isn't that stronger than the bond of blood, my brothers and sisters? Gone are the days when the kuffar are excited because they can trample over us by the mere disunity that we are engaged in, my brothers and sisters. We need it. We need it desperately. Our brothers are suffering across the globe, all over. The reason is we are swearing one another. We are calling one another names. We do not want to look at one another. Whereas we all utter the shahada. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. My brothers and sisters, it is a passionate call. We want peace. We are searching for peace. We are the people of peace. Why then are we looked at as warmongers who are killing one another across the globe just because we have a little difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah and may he grant us unity. May he open our doors until we meet again. It does not mean that because you support a different party or you belong to a different group of beliefs, 
that you are disunited with the rest. No. Maybe we have disagreements in five items, but if you look at what we agree on, there are another thousand things which we agree on, commonalities. And for this reason, we call on not only ourselves, but the globe at large. Let us unite. Let us tolerate each other. Let us appreciate each other's differences, the different cultures and traditions. For as long as they do not trample on the feet of others, we will allow that to pass and we will respect it and we will acknowledge it with open arms. And we expect the same, that we need to be also allowed the same freedoms that we would allow. And we ask the Almighty to open our doors. The topic of unity is great. I've only touched on a small part of it. قال لا فقلت لماذا كيف ترجم يا شيخ والله ثانك يو فيري ماتش يا اخي ذكر ريسبكت ذا ديفرنس اوف اوبينيون دونت فورس سم ون تو بيليف اكزاكتلي وات يو belief don't force them they will be answerable to Allah you cannot force someone they will believe differently and they will definitely believe I am doing this because I believe this is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted I give you an example of the Mawlid when it comes to the Mawlid you and I know that there is more than one opinion some people believe that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do something they will never ever do it Leave them, they are okay, they are fine when they get to Allah. They're going to say, oh Allah, I was so scared to do something the messenger didn't expressly do and the companions did not completely do, so I, I kept it out. He's not going to be punished, he's got a good enough answer. Why do we have to spew hate? Because they didn't do it the way we did it and we label them whatever's. And we want to create disaster in the Ummah. Your view is not the only acceptable view in Islam. There are people who really want to do things out of the love of the Prophet ﷺ and you are busy calling them Gustah Rasul. For what? They are doing it out of the love of Allah. There are people who celebrate the Mawlid every day by fulfilling as many Sunnah as they can of the beloved Nabi ﷺ. We cannot call them Gustah Rasul. We cannot. We are really wrong if we do that. We are spewing hate. If we want to dance in the mosque, we can perhaps do that. But we will not ever, ever point at someone who doesn't want to engage in what we are engaging in. And we call them big, big names in order to spew hate in the ummah. For what? Why? This is another opinion. Discuss it. Let's talk about it. Let's express the evidences. Come on, my brothers. Come on, let's wake up. Learn to understand your way is not the only way. And it's not the only way in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who fast on a Monday and they say this is our way of actually celebrating what blessing Allah bestowed upon us by the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they asked him, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why do you fast on a Monday? He said, that was the day I was born. So every week they are fasting Monday and Thursday. For them, that is the greatest way to celebrate. Subhanallah. Let them have it their way. According to them, they don't want to do anything that wasn't done in the past. There's no point in arguing and shoving people's opinions down, your, down their throats. I think what people misunderstood is when I was speaking about the secular rights of people. So I live as a Muslim in a country that is not a Muslim country. And in this country, there are people who follow all sorts of faiths. There are people who engage in association of what I would term as partnership with Allah. Are they free to live in this country? The answer is yes. And uh, I would respect their rights as a citizen of this country, even though I, I have the right to disagree with them, and I do. But it has to be very respectful. It doesn't mean I've compromised my faith. It doesn't mean I've agreed to something that Islam disallows or the Quran clearly says that this is disallowed. Uh, but it does mean that if someone has chosen a different religion or a different uh, belief or even a different sect from among the Muslims, then the minimum I owe them is the respect of a human being with disagreement and some people don't understand what that means I think it's a very mature statement and it actually goes to reflect that we are tolerant and uh, that's how it is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy 
let's be honest, we have like the Sufi side, we have the Salafi side, we have the different flavors of the Muslims around the world. When it comes to unity, what is the potential in today's day and age to see unity? And Can I know it's a bit of a controversial thing, but no, no, it's not you're controversial. a uniting voice, Mufti. Wallahi, I look at you as a uniting voice in this regard. What's your opinion? It's not controversial. It's very interesting. You know, I... I, I love to follow the word of Allah to the letter as best as I can, right? Mm. We're human. and So Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ In a nutshell, you know, Allah is describing who can there be better than the one who calls out to Allah, does good deeds and says, I'm a Muslim. Mm. I promise you from day one, I've stuck to that, to say, I will call myself a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Someone says, what are you? I'm a Muslim. But what exactly are you? I'm a Muslim. I'm exactly a Muslim. SubhanAllah. You know, what do you follow? Then I can explain. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. You know, as per the understanding of the first generations of Muslims. Yeah. No, but what exactly do you mean? I say, I mean, I'm a Muslim. That is the only uniting factor according to me. SubhanAllah. The minute you have a different answer, it's not a uniting factor anymore. I guess there's that verse in the Quran, Samakum. But to be honest, there are people who say, no, this sheikh said that you can't call yourself Muslim anymore. This, the other sheikh said, and I always say, those are their opinions. Yes. I, am using, I am using the evidence from the Quran to prove Itself, my point. Yeah. So I also have an opinion. And, and those opinions are opinions of mere mortals. They could be top scholars of their time. Mm. But to be honest with you, they still have, in a certain way, contradicted the Qur'an. I don't care what people say. Yeah. They have contradicted the Qur'an. कोई भी शख्स दुनिया में जो अपना मनहज जाहिर ना करता हो अपने को गोलमोल बात करके मुसलमान कहता हो या अभी जो सुनने में आई उनकी बात वो कहते हैं कहते हैं कि मैं पुराने उलमा या पुराने असर मुसलमान हूँ पुराने मुसलमानों के तरीके पर हूँ ये सब बातें वाजे नहीं है इस वजह से ऐसे आदमी से चाहे वो मन, इसमाइल मनक हो या कोई भी हो उनसे इल्म नहीं लेना चाहिए मैंने उस वक्त ही जवाब दिया था बाद में जो चीज़ें जाहिर हुई जब लोगों ने इस, इसके बारे में मज़ीद पूछना शुरू किया तो हमारे आप ही ने आप जैसे हमारे अजीज़ अजीज़ुल्फ़ार और अमर भाई ने कुछ मालूम दी तो अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह उस मालूम की रोशनी में ख़ुद उनकी ज़बान से जो बात मैंने सुनी गोल बातें कर रहे हैं कि अपने को कोई किसी मसल को बुरा नहीं कहना चाहिए हर एक के साथ तान होना चाहिए खसी होते हैं और मैं कहूँगा ये खसी का माना ये कि अकीदे में गैरत नहीं रह जाती है बल्कि मैंने उस मजलिस में जिसने किसी ने पूछा था मिसाल भी दी थी कि बहुत से लोग ऐसे हैं जो अपने को जमात इस्लामी से मुतल इखवान मुसाफ मुसलम से मुतल करके और वो किसी को कहते हैं किसी के अकीदे को गलत ना कहो यहाँ तक कि शीह से भी तालमेल रख करके और उनसे ख़ास मोहब्बत रख करके मोहिद हुकूमत के खिलाफ का बहुत कुछ बातें कहते रहते हैं सऊदी अरब वगैरह के तो मैं ये कहूँगा कि ये लोग अकीदे में खसी होते हैं खसी का लफ्ज़ इस्तेमाल किया है मैंने कई बार बहरहाल इसमें भी इस्तेमाल हमने इसी माने में किया खसूस तौर पर उनको हमने खसी नहीं कहा था अगर वो भी 
اسی طرح ہیں جو عقیدہ ظاہر نہیں کرتے یا جیسا کہ ان کی بات میں نے سنی تو ان پر بھی یہ چیز منتبت ہو سکتی ہے کہ وہ عقیدہ ظاہر نہیں کرتے بلکہ عقیدہ اب ظاہر ہو گیا ہمارے نزدیک ان کو چھپ کے نہیں رہنا چاہیے واضح ہے لوگ جو ہے سمجھ جاتے ہیں کہ آپ کا اندازے قدم کا کدھر کس طرف جا رہا ہے جی